This is Armstrong, and in this video we're looking at central tendency and spread. So first of all, let's look at central tendency. As there are three types of central tendency, this includes the mean, the median, and the mode. So the mean is basically the average, and in order to calculate the mean, you have to calculate their result. So this is the sum of all x, and divide it by n. So that's the frequency, so how many there are. Then the mode is the group with the largest frequency. And then the median, this is the middle value. So the medium of a set of data is the middle value of data. And this has to be listed in order of size. So to calculate the median, you have to work out n plus 1 over 2. And if this is not a whole number, you have to take the mean of the two values on either side. So, for example, if we were to get the 7.5th value, and then we had a 7th value of 9, and then we had a 8th um, value of around 14, say, what you would do is you would take the mean of these two numbers, and to get the mean, you do the sum of all x, so that would be 23 divided by 2, and that is going to be 11.5. So here we have a question, and it's given us some data, and it's asked us to calculate the modal interval, and then an estimate for the mean. So first of all, we have to do a modal interval. And if you remember that the mode is the group with the largest frequency. So we look at the group with the largest frequency. F is frequency. 7, it obviously is. So therefore, the modal interval is going to be 16 to 21. But an estimate for the mean is slightly harder. And this is because it doesn't give us values as such. It does just give us 4 to 9 or 10 to 15. So in order to do this, we're going to have to work out the midpoint of each value and then times it by the frequency and then divide it by the all frequencies added together. So that is a sum of all x, but again, x, as it doesn't give us a single value, we'll have to be taking some midpoints. So that means that the midpoints that we've got are going to be equal. So that's going to be equal to 6.5. Then 10 to 15, the midpoint is 12.5. Then 18.5. 24.5. And then 30.5. And essentially, as they've each got 5 in between, you're just dividing that by 2. So you're getting 2.5 and adding 2.5 to the bottom value. But then now we have our midpoint, we have to times each of our midpoints by our frequencies and then divide it by the total frequency. So in order to this, we're going to get the 6.5. That is just times by 1, so that's going to stay the same. Then we're going to be adding on 12.5 times by 3. Then plus 18.5, that's going to be times by 7, then plus 24.5 times by 4, and then finally we're adding on 30.5 times by 2. Now this is all going to be over all the frequencies added together. So we're doing 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 3 plus 1, which is equal to 17. Now all you have to do, put that into your calculator, and you're going to get the answer of 19.5588, which we can round to say that that's only 19.6. Obviously, this is only an estimate as we've had to take the midpoint. And in reality, the first one, for example, could have just been 4. And we've taken the point of 6.5. So this is just an estimate as it asks for in the question. 
So now it's time to look at spread or dispersion. And there are four types of dispersion. Those include range, interquartile range, variance, and standard deviation. So range is simple. as The range is just the largest value minus the smallest value. But then the interquartile range is gained by doing Q3, which is the upper quartile, minus Q1. So that is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. In order to gain the upper quartile, you have to do 3 times by n plus 1 over 4. Now, likewise, sometimes you don't need that 1, but normally you do. Then that is going to be minus n plus 1 over 4. Again, sometimes you don't need that 1, but again, normally you do. So then you have variance, and the variance shows how spread out the data is from the mean. So in order to work out the variance, you work out how far each data value is from the mean. You then square these values before adding them up and dividing by n. But a more generalized form is this, and this is the, the sum of x minus the mean squared over n. And that is also equal to the sum of x squared over n minus the mean squared. But when it is when we are using a sample, we have to use another form. And this other form is going to be s squared. And that is going to be the sum of x minus the mean squared over n minus 1 this time. And that's because the divisor of a sample variant is going to be n minus 1. If we're looking at in the other one, we're going to have the sum of x squared over n minus 1. And then instead of the minus the mean squared, what we're going to get is minus the sum of x that's going to be squared and then divide that by n because that would be how you get the mean would be sum of x over n. That's going to be times by n minus 1. So that's how you do the sample variance. Then for the standard deviation, the standard deviation is simply the square root of the variance. So we have the root of the sum of x minus the mean squared over n. And likewise, we, that's equal to the, um, the square root of the root x squared over n minus the mean squared. Likewise, we could, if you want to find the sample standard deviation, we would have to just do the root of either one of these. So here we have a couple of questions involving spread or dispersion. And they're saying for these sets of data, let's work out the standard deviation. So the first one is saying that the sum of x minus the mean squared is equal to 141.4 and n is equal to 10. And these are values taken from the entire population. So we won't need to use the sample standard deviation. So then in order to do this, we are going to use the idea that standard deviation is equal to the sum of x minus the mean squared over n. And this is obviously all square rooted. So that is going to be, we have that as 141.4 And that is going to be divided by 10. Therefore, put that in your calculator. That's going to get 3.76. But B is slightly more difficult. As we have a values for 1 is taken from a sample of the population, which means we're going to have to use that sample standard deviation. So therefore, we consider S for sample. That is going to be equal to root of the sum of x squared over n minus 1 minus, and then that's going to be the sum of x, that should be squared, divided by n, and then n minus 1. So therefore, that shall be equal, 
we do root x squared gives us as 9,779 divided by n minus 1, so 9 minus 1, is divided by 8, then minus, and then this is not x squared, this is not going to use this value, you're going to use this 295, but this 295 is going to be squared. And that shall be divided by 9 times by 8, 72. Put that in your calculator. What you're going to get is 3.7. So our final question of the day says that 50 milk samples, each of mass 100 grams, were analysed as part of a food quality inspection and the potassium content in milligrams was recorded. So the results are shown in the table. And these are the results here. So firstly, we have to estimate the mean of a table. And earlier we looked at an example like this. So we're going to have to find the midpoint in each of these and then do it times by each of these divided by the frequency added together. So that means that first of all, we're going to do the midpoint times by the frequency. So we've got 142 times 5. That's going to be add. 146 times 12, that's what shall be add 150 times by 16, add 154 times by 11, and then finally we'll add 158 times by 6. That shall be divided because it's the mean. So all of that added together shall be divided by the frequency. It don't need to actually um, add these up as it does say it's going to be 50 milk samples. So that shall be divided by 50. So therefore, put that in your calculator and you will get 150.08 milligrams. So in question B, we're looking at the interpercentile range. So this is, isn't the interquartile range. Instead, we're going to have to work out the 40th percent and the 70th percent and work out the 70th percent minus the 40th percent. So to work out the 40th percent, we'll do 50 times by 0.4. This is because 0.4 is about the 40th percent and 50 is that there, the frequency. That is going to be equal to 20. So we are looking at the 20th value. So then if we look at to our table and we find the 20th value, well we have 5 there, then we have 17 there, so it has to be in this section here. But in this section here, it can be what any, we've got 16 things in it. So we go three into the section because 20 minus 17 is three. So as we've gone three into the thing, we're gonna do three divided by 16 because there are 16 values. And then we're gonna times that by the width, which is that 152 minus 148 times by four, that is equal to 0.75. So therefore, our 40th percentile is going to be 148 plus 0.75. That is equal to 148.75. Then, now let's look for our 70th percentile. And this time, we're going to go the same steps. We're going to do 50 times by 0.7 this time, instead of 0.4, which will mean that we are now looking for the 35th value. So now we've got the 5, we've got 17, we're going to add up, that's going to make it to 33. So therefore, we're now looking in this section, we have 11 here, 
So that means that we've gone 2 in because 33, 35 minus 33 is 2. So we've got 2. This time the frequency is 11. That's going to be times by 4 again because it's got a width of 4, which means that we're left with 0 0.73. So therefore, this time we're going to have 152 plus 0.73 and that shall be equal to 152.73 so as we have to find the range that's what we have to do now and we're going to do that by saying 152.73 minus 148 0.75 that is equal to 3.98 milligrams which we will be able to round just 4 milligrams so thank you for watching this video and see you soon bye